Praise the Lord. We are so excited to be back on Spirit and Life. We've been talking about grace, the power of grace. When the Spirit of grace is poured upon you, what does it do in you and do for you? And we have seen that grace, when the power of grace comes upon you, when the Spirit of grace comes upon you, it empowers you to love God, empowers you to love God's people. You love uncontrollably. You love God's people with no reason. We've also seen that when the spirit of grace comes upon you, oh, it gives you the power and the enablement to forgive people, to overlook their offenses. And I pray in the name of Jesus, that as you have received forgiveness by grace, you will love people and forgive them by grace. You will overlook offenses by grace. Because Jesus overlooked offenses and went to the cross. So when that spirit of grace comes upon us, we are empowered to forgive. May that grace begin to work in your life in the name of Jesus. We also said that when the spirit of grace comes upon you, it empowers you to endure trials and difficulties of life and to stand in faith. I'm praying for you that whatever the situation and the condition of your life, by the grace of God, you will endure it, you will overcome it, you will stand in faith and you have victory at the end in the name of Jesus. What else does grace give to you? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you that grace enables us to serve God faithfully in the gospel. Grace enables us to serve God faithfully in the gospel. You know, without grace, we, we can easily give up in the place of service. Grace keeps us faithful in the midst of difficulties and challenges, in the midst of discouragement. Grace keeps us going. Apostle Paul, he talks so much about grace, receiving grace. And indeed, the apostles of Jesus, they were able to overcome the various challenges and persecutions because they walked by grace. Pray that the spirit of grace will come upon us in this our generation. That we will not be cowed by intimidation but by his grace we will preach the gospel courageously and boldly in the name of Jesus. You know because when the, the spirit of grace is released, boldness is released. We become bold to preach. In Acts chapter 4 the apostles of, of Jesus, they were persecuted, they were, you know, they were uh, arrested for preaching the gospel, they were scourged, and the scripture tells us in Acts chapter 4, in verse 31, they gathered themselves, they prayed. The scripture says when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled, and then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember I told you that the spirit of grace and supplication is the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of God. When it comes on you, it impacts you with the spirit of grace. So he came on them. The scripture says they spoke the word of God with boldness and with great power. Gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Wow. So when the spirit of grace came upon them, boldness came. Hallelujah. Grace was multiplied. 
Verse 34 of that act says, Neither was there any among them that lacked. Wow. Because grace was released. Grace was. I pray that that same grace will come upon you today. The grace that gives boldness to preach the gospel faithfully. May it be released. May it begin to walk in your life. In the name of Jesus. When they receive grace, they witness with great power. May the grace of God that gives boldness and power to preach faithfully, may it come upon you today. In the name of Jesus. When that grace came on them, the scripture says, none of them lacked. It says in verse 34, neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of the land or house sold them. And brought the prices of the things that were sold. Wow. And they laid them down at the apostles' feet. The authority of God's grace. It releases, you know, grace for faithfulness. Grace for giving. Grace for sacrifice in the place of the gospel. These people, because of the point of God's spirit. The point of the spirit of grace. They began to give what they had. They sold their possession. They brought it for the cause of the gospel. They were emboldened. They preached with boldness. And pray that that same grace will be released to us today. In the name of Jesus. Number two. Grace, when it is released, it also enables us to serve God acceptably. Not only to serve him faithfully. But it, it enables us to serve him af, you know, acceptably, effectively. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 10, the scripture says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Here is Apostle Paul acknowledging that grace was bestowed upon him and because of that grace, he was able to labor. He labored. Hallelujah. So the grace of God enables us to labor for the kingdom and to labor acceptably and effectively. Paul says, yet not I, but the grace of God which was upon me. So the grace upon him made it easy for him to labor for the gospel and to labor effectively. May that grace that enables us not to be tired of laboring, not to complain in, la in laboring, but to find laboring for the gospel easy. May it rest upon us today in the name of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, Hebrews 12, 28, the scripture says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So when the spirit of grace comes upon us, it empowers us to serve God with reverence, to serve God with godly fear, and to serve him acceptably. That means not all service is acceptable unto God. If you serve God with pride, if you serve God, you know, anyhow, it cannot be acceptable. But when the grace of God comes upon the spirit of grace begins to walk in your life. You walk in humility, you walk in God's affair, and you serve God acceptably. Hallelujah. I pray for you that you receive that grace that enables men to serve God acceptably in the name of Jesus. And just before I pray for you, I want you to know that when you receive the grace of God, it uh, empowers you to have visible results. Oh, I'm praying that the grace that make it the result of your work for the kingdom to be visible, to be acknowledged by others, that grace begins to function in your life in the name of Jesus. That was the grace upon the apostles. Their work became visible in Acts chapter 11 from verse 19 to 21. The scripture tells us that grace made the work of the apostles to increase. People like Stephen traveled far and near preaching the word to, to, to the Jews. And people were hearing and the Bible says in verse 21 of Acts chapter 19 
the hand of God was with him, a great number believed and turned to the Lord. I'm praying for you today that grace for multiplication will rest upon you. The grace that makes the work that, you are, that we are doing to become visible will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Abundance of grace. Receive grace to serve God faithfully in the gospel. Receive grace to serve acceptably. Receive grace that brings multiplication and visibility in the name of Jesus. Amen. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with the